Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike at Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Jayco Prestige 36H Precept. Take a beautiful motor home here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. Of course, on your campsite, there'll be plenty of room for that awning to come in and out. Over on your off campsite, I want you to think about your slide. Be plenty of room for that to come in and out unimpeded as well as this slide back here then the last thing i want you to think about is where your power and water connections are going to be your power is going to store inside here this storage area here all the way at the rear of your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle water will be in the compartment just ahead of that so park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities when you arrive Get you in a good parking spot. First thing you're gonna do is level your unit. Now once you park, just to the left here of your driver's seat is gonna be your equalizing system. Simply turn that on, and all you're gonna do is touch auto level. We well, have all of your auto leveling system down right now. I'll show you those. And I'll show you I'm running back up when we hit the all retract. So here's what they look like down. I recommend uh, some jack pads. Get some big stabilizing jack pads and put them down underneath these as you're running them down. Uh, it's going to better distribute the weight and protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks. Get some big wide ones to put underneath those. Once we got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. So again, your big 50 amp cord, stores right inside there. I'll show you here, you can run this power cord down through this hole here. You also, at the end of that 50, in your convenience pack, if you need to plug into a campsite that has 30, you have a 50 to 30 dog bone, they call it. And if you ever need to plug in at home in any other 110, throw this 30 to 110 on the end here. Do you have lighting up in here? Got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. So your docking station is in the compartment right ahead of there. So we made it real simple up here. Let's say we're going to a campsite. City water. White down, left, blue to the left, red up, green to the left. We are all set up for city water. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit here. Over here it says city water. Hook that up, hook your hose up, turn that on. Now after your hose been on for a little while, you can go inside. We have our unit level and stable. You can deploy the slides if you want. I'll show you how to do that when we get inside, but deploy your slides and go around and open up all your water taps. Get all the air out of the lines. Once you've got water flowing through them, shut them off. And then you know that you can uh, run your hot water from inside. Your hot water tank will be on the other side. I'll show you that, show you where that's on. Just gotta make sure that's turned on. All right, let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water and go dry camping somewhere. Well, in that case, we're gonna start with a power fill tank. City inlet to tank. So white down, blue down, blue down, red up, green to the left. 
Now we can fill our tank. Turn that hose on. The way to tell when that freshwater tank is full is you go inside where you check the levels of your battery in black and gray tanks. There's also a freshwater button. Once that shows that's full, go ahead and remove your hose, put your cap back on. Once you've got that full, then you are going to switch to dry camping. Dry camping down, red and blue up, blue to the left. Now you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water, only when you want to utilize the water that you have in your potable tank. Also up here shows how to winterize and sanitize. Those actually siphon, um, siphon from a tank or a uh, bottle to fill your unit. Just make sure that you bypass your hot water heater. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. Again, your city and freshwater connection. Water pump, here's a light for out here. Set some paper towels in here for sanitary. This is your water filter. Back here is your low point drains. I'll just tell you that your second one from the left is your fresh water tank. And then your other three are your city low point drains. Here's where we'll dump our black tank we'll flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. Continuing down your off campsite, there's your fueling station. Tons of storage. And your generator, we'll start that up from in, inside when I get in there. And lastly, this front section here is gonna be your batteries. You can unstrap that, lift up on this handle and pull that whole battery rack out. Coming around your driver's side of your unit. Tons more storage. You have your outdoor TV here. Your remote. Turn that on. I want to talk about your sound system here. Boss AM FM Bluetooth sound system. There's your TV on. Shut that off. Your remote will be indoors. And sound system here. Turn that up, try to get something to come in. There's your sound system working. Continuing along this side, back here is your propane and your last storage finally your hot water heater and this is where you'll turn that on don't turn that on until you've got all your lines full full of water and around the back of the unit your ladder the only thing i want to mention on this is go up there a couple times a year uh check your roof out you got a completely walkable roof get up there check your seams uh, check the tops of your slide toppers. Just keep an eye on things. Maintain your roof and you'll maintain the life of this trailer. About covers everything out here. Now let's go take a look inside. All right, come up inside your unit immediately to your right. First thing I'd like to point out in all trailers where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Also, at your entry doorway is your main power for the entire unit. That'll turn on all the battery power in here once that's on we can turn on all of our lights so here's our main power here's our power step and then our awning I'm gonna continue running your awning out and show you real quick got my awning here well this is my little short one it's my doorway awning gotta run that out real quick runs out on its own and stops on its own run that back in so your main patio awning we'll control from the control center just run that back in real quick we'll turn on all the rest of our lighting here here's our patio we can retract 
or extend that from here. So you only want to extend that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your lights. That will extend itself past that and roll itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run that out. Make sure you don't run it out too far. You can control that from here as well as your main control center down there in the hallway, which we'll get to in just a moment. Turn your awning back in here while I am. Next to that's going to be your inverter. You also have main master lights on and off here. Our lights back in, our awnings back in. Continue our tour. I'll we'll start walking right into the living room here. Show you your TV. Turn that on while I show you that it stores inside. You also have a 110 and USB here. There's your TV. Working. I'm going to put this remote. You got to make sure your TV is all the way up too because the remote reader is right here. Right here next to your outdoor remote. And then put your TV back down. We're just going to lower it back down. Make sure you always put this down when you get ready to travel. It is on a pretty sturdy base, but you don't need that bouncing around while you're going down the road. Now your table. We'll lift up, pull it towards yourself. Set down on these ledges right here. Put the back cushions on top and that'll give you another bed. Coming into our kitchen area here. Turn on a bunch more lighting. Come over to our control panel here real quick. Just gonna touch this light here and turn on all my lighting throughout the unit. There we go. So continuing into your kitchen, you have a convection microwave. High, low exhaust on that. Lighting as well. Your cooktop here. Beautiful cover for it. You just simply turn that to light. Hit your spark. And once your gas is turned on, these will light here. The oven. Here you hit it to light. Light a, a uh, pilot light in there. Your fridge. The main thing I want to mention on this is your safety latch for travel. Make sure you got that locked in. Gonna keep these doors from popping open on you as you go down the road. Continue down this left side into your bedroom. Turn on the light here, TV here. You'll see a few of these throughout the unit. What they are is temperature readers. It allows the thermostat to work better by having a few of these around the unit reading the temperature. There's your TV in here working. I'm going to shut that off. Put your remote right in here. Show your TV. Grab the bottom and lift it up. Got lots of good storage up underneath there. Into your bathroom, excuse me, bedroom, is your washer and dryer. There will be manuals for those. Closet, make sure all closet doors are locked in for travel. On your bed, you just have a little, touch it once for a blue ambient light, hold it in for a nice reading light. And you do have a little bit of storage up underneath your bed as well. For travel, make sure that you have this bathroom or bedroom door snapped open and bungeed. Same thing here in the bathroom. Make sure these doors are secure for travel. 110 here. You do have an accent light and a bath fan. You'll have to hand crank open for the exhaust. And here's another spot to turn on your water heater. Turn it on here, raise and lower the temperature. It's your on demand system. Coming in here to your fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can go through and show you. You can make it brighter or darker. Biggest thing, it, folks, is the heat. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, instead of using up your gas, if you're plugged in at a campsite, turn this heater on. I feel it getting warm already. It'll get it toasty in here in no time and it'll save you a lot of gas. Recliners, your sofa, a lot of individual lighting throughout here. 
but you can shut them all off from your control panel which we'll go back to in just a minute your euro loft let's talk about this loft bed as you see i cannot bring it up and down turn on the key i cannot bring it up or down this belt buckle has to be removed in order for this to work you see it comes down pretty quick or bring it down to the tops of your bed or chairs there you do have a ladder up underneath here you can utilize as well as a table and legs that will set up right there turn this back up this is really just a safety latch so no kids are gonna go hitting the button and have this come down smoke alarm All the usual control panels up here. Now we're going to go back down the hallway and talk about your main control panel. Let's go up to home. Home is going to show us all of our lighting. We can shut that off from here or turn it all on. Over here we can also turn on our water pump or see when our black and gray and fresh tanks are full. Over here it just shows you uh, the generator start which we'll get to in a minute. And your heat or you can individually go through each one there's your generator start there's all your lighting you can just shut them off individually come down to temperature let's turn the AC on in the back area one time the rear hear that one kick on shut that one off turn on our front AC that one kicked on shut that one off do the same thing if you want to change it to heat you just sw switch this over to furnace set your temperatures now let's go to slides and your main awning patio control you can do from here and then lastly mobile apps diagnostics etc set your time so let's go back to power Or our home screen and let's start our generator all right so that kicked on let's go out here and show you that running Owning 5500 generator purring nicely. Get back up in here. Now we'll shut that off. So that about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close some things up. So first thing I like to do shut off my main lights and then I can look and see so I left my accent lights on in here and these lights on here now I can see that all the lights are off in the unit I can come back to my main and turn it on and we're gonna start bringing some slides in so let's go to slide mechanisms doors and drawers before we do any slides make sure all doors and drawers are closed uh, everything is secured your TV is down Nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in. One last thing, make sure your shower door is also locked back. Just want to button down everything, secure everything, be ready for the road. We're going to start with the bedroom slide. Just hit retract. Let's do our dinette slide. Oop, retract. Right 
runs in nice and quiet and smooth. Now it's bringing this way. As you hit retract, you might have to step forward a little bit. But this is a pretty shallow slide. All right, once we've got that in, go back to our lighting. Back to home. Shut off our master lighting and exit the unit. Now at this point, we'll unhook all of our cable, our power, and our water. We're going to come to our equalizer system. We're going to power that up. And we're going to get all retract. All retract. We're going to come out here and let you see them coming up. Get back here in time. See all your stabilizing jacks running themselves back up. Once they're all the way up, just wait for it. All the way up, stopped beeping, lights went off, shut that off. Now we're going to head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, we're going to park accordingly. Your dump is going to be behind your tires, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle, your rear tires of course. <coughs> Once you get there, the two ways we can dump here. Now, if we're gonna dump just a regular dump, take the sewage hose, comes your convenience pack, open this baby up, hook up your sewage hose. First thing you pull is open up this handle. Then, you're gonna come back up to this storage. Once you get your other end in the dump, you're gonna pull your black handle which is going to be your right handle. That's going to be your sewer. Now, after it sounds like that's no longer draining, we're going to come back here, leaving that black handle open, take your water pressure again, water pressure regulator, and the hose at the dump station, hook that up, again, with your black handles open, let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all the nastiness out of your black tank. Once that's done, Unhook that hose, come back here, close your black handle, and blow your gray tank. That's going to be your upper one. And it's going to be clean your waters, your sinks, and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you a little bit. Then you take that sewage hose off and store it in a nice sanitary place. Now, if you want to use the macerator, make sure this is, this is closed. Make sure this is on. Make sure this is closed. Then you will unscrew this cap and literally put it right on top of the sewage dump. Big long hose here to get you to it. Once that's on there, then you'll pull this handle and hit your macerator. What your macerator is going to do is it's going to pull everything from your sewage up into this grind it in that box right there and send it down into the dump now unless you're uh, not using um products to break up your waste you normally won't need the macerator but if for some reason uh you're dumping your tanks and it looks like your tank is still showing full but you're not getting anything to come out then odds are you want to use the macerator to get everything up out of the bottom of that hook up your Put away your power and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this precept for many years to come. Happy camping.